Hi everyone, my name is Karen and I'm the Children and Families Worker from Mount Pleasant Baptist Church in Blackwood. Thank you for joining me today. In just under a week it will be Father's Day, so I thought that we could celebrate our dads. Now I realise that not everyone has a dad, but I hope that everyone has a person that they love or look up to. So just think of that person instead. Today we're going to make a building brick pen holder with space for a small photo or drawing. Yours will look something like this when it's finished. You will need to gather some simple tools and materials before you begin. You should have everything you need already at home. As I always say, the creative energy and the love you spend while you're making these crafts are more important than the actual components. So just have fun with what you've got available to you. So now I'll go through the list of materials and tools you'll need. You'll need some building bricks, a good variety of them. Most of your bricks need to be two studs deep, but you will also need some that are only one stud deep. You'll also need a brick building plate. This is to hold your project secure. Mine is very big, but if you've got a smaller one, that would be better. You're going to need a photograph of yourself or your favourite dog, in my case, or a picture that you've drawn. Then you're going to need a rule, a pair of scissors to cut the picture to size, and some paper glue to stick it to your building, pen, building block pen holder. And then we'll just need a few pens to put in the pen pot. Next, we're going to do some preparation. If you're organised, like me, you'll want to separate your building blocks into piles of the same block type. If you're even more organised and you've got a lot of bricks, you could separate them into colour as well. Or you might prefer to just wing it and find the pieces to fit as you go along. That's just as good, but I don't have time to do it that way today. If you've got a large collection of bricks, you could match up some coordinating colours, but I'm just going to be fairly random. So let's dive straight in and start making the pen holder. Whilst we keep building our pen holder, I'm going to tell you a Bible story from Luke 15. It's about a son who left home. It's often called the parable of the prodigal son. In this story, we're going to hear about two brothers that seem very different, but really have a lot in common. We're also going to hear about their dad, who keeps on loving his children, even when they treat him very badly. I want you to listen very carefully to the way that each brother treats his father and the way the father responds. Then Jesus said, a man had two sons. The younger son said to his father, give me my share of the property. So the father divided the property between his two sons. Then the younger son gathered all the up that was his and left. He travelled far away to another country. There he wasted his money in foolish living. He spent everything that he had. Soon after that the land became very dry and there was no rain. There was not enough food to eat anywhere in the country. The son was hungry and needed money, so he got a job with one of the citizens there. The man sent the son into the fields to feed pigs. The son was so hungry that he was willing to eat the food the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. The son realised that he had been very foolish. He thought, all of my father's servants have plenty of food, but I am here almost dying with hunger. I will leave and return to my father. I'll say to him, father, I have sinned against God and against you. I am not good enough to be called your son, but let me be like one of your servants. So the son left and went to his father. 
While the son was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. He felt sorry for his son, so the father ran to him and hugged and kissed him. The son said, Father, I have sinned against God and against you. I am not good enough to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Hurry, bring the best clothes and put them on him. Also, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get our fat calf and kill it. Then we can have a feast and celebrate. My son was dead, but now he is alive again. He was lost, but now he is found. So they began to celebrate. The older son was in the field. As he came closer to the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. So he called to one of the servants and asked, What does all this mean? The servant said, Your brother has come back. Your father killed the fat calf to eat because your brother came home safely. The older son was angry and would not go into the feast. So his father went out and begged him to come in. The son said to his father, I have served you like a slave for many years. I have always obeyed your commands. But you never even killed a young goat for me to have a feast with my friends. But your other son has wasted all your money on prostitutes. Then he comes home and you kill the fat calf for him. The father said to him, Son, you are always with me. All that I have is yours. We had to celebrate and be happy because your brother was dead, but now he is alive. He was lost, but now he is found. In the parable of the prodigal son, Jesus was teaching that God wants to forgive both sinners and self-righteous people. The real focus of this story is a long-suffering father who continues to love both sons as they dishonour him. It is a beautiful story of God's love and determination to see the lost return to him. Jesus liked to teach people that God really does love everyone. But many times the church people would get upset and think they were better than the sinners. This is a story that Jesus told them to show that both kind of people need forgiveness and that God wants to save everyone. The father in the story shows us what God is like. The brothers in the story show us what we are like. The point is that God wants to save both people who follow the rules and people who break all the rules. So, are you a rule keeper or a rule breaker? I think that, like me, you're probably a bit of both. And that's okay, because God loves us when we keep to the rules and do good things. But he also loves us when we break the rules and do bad things. But, in loving us, he wants to help change us so that we are more good than bad. Maybe you can think about how you can change. So you can see we're at the last layer now. And I'm just trying to work out. where my bricks are going to fit, because at the moment they don't seem to want to fit. There we are. Sorted it. So there we go. This is your finished pot holder. And in, uh, in there you've got your little slot for a picture to go in. You can use some glue then onto the back of your picture. You just need to measure it using your ruler to see what size you need it to fit. And then you can pop that in. And there's your lovely little pot holder made. Put some pens in and that's your father's day present done. I don't have a child so this dog Ollie, he's our child 
so I've made this with a picture of Ollie. So, oh, here we have it. Our finished brick pen holder looks wonderful and I'm sure the person that you give it to will be thrilled with it. I'd like to say thank you to you for joining me to make this Father's Day pen holder and learning about how we can make sure that we show our love to our dad or to a special person in our life and how God loves us whether we're good or bad and that he wants to forgive us whether we are a self-righteous person or a sinner. I'd like to see a photograph of the pen holder that you've made so that I can share them on our Facebook page. So please email me a photo to familiesblackwood at gmail.com. I've put the email address in the description section of this video, or you could post it yourself on our Facebook group page. Don't forget to give a thumbs up to this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel down below. Have a very blessed Father's Day. Take care. Bye bye.